more and more patients are coming out in the open and telling the world what cannabis is doing for them. Moving and incredible stories. Like Tom Curran's story, his wife Marie died three years ago. She suffered from multiple sclerosis. It gradually took the life out of her. When asked at one stage, how would she describe it from sort of one to 10 on a pain threshold? She said it was about eight. Now for somebody to have an eight level pain, 24 hours a day, it's horrific. The battle they fought at the time was for Marie's right to die, having her own choice to decide when enough was enough. Their court battle became a landmark case and a national news headline. Mr. Kern has said he would be willing to assist Marie Fleming in ending her own life if he could do so lawfully. The Supreme Court judgment delivered by the Chief Justice and that there's no constitutional right to commit suicide or to arrange for the termination of one's life at a time of their own choosing. Tom, a few words that she's written for you to read out. This may not be easy for me. It seems the state does not want me to die, but all the time chips away at my quality of life, one cut back after another. I would ask them to come and live my life for just one day or even one hour and tell me <laughs> how enthusiastic they would be about living. After Marie died, Tom was able to tell his story why they turned to cannabis. So we, we bought it, we bought the uh, soap bar, hash, and used that. And about, I can only, if, if, if I was a religious person, I would call it miraculous. Within 20 seconds, her body just relaxed and the spasm disappeared. Her pain went from about eight down to three. And now suddenly she was, she was getting night's sleep and so was I. So it gave us back a quality of life. That was proved to me that it was working, that it was now, as I say, a medicine. The fear that I had was that I knew that in a lot of cases it's mixed with all sorts of things. So I was now faced with the dilemma of Mary smoking something that was, was giving her tremendous relief, but I had no idea what other chemicals and what other crap was going into her body and how that would maybe interact with the, the normal uh, medications she was taking or accelerate the MS. So I was very fearful of that. There's no control. The only way that we could be in control was to produce it ourselves. So if I was going to grow it, I needed to know which one. Yeah. So again, the MS community with forums were very helpful from that point of view. But one of the things that came back constantly from them was that while one variety might work very well for one person, that doesn't necessarily work for another, which is one of the reasons why we need and uh, we need a lot of research, but in the meantime, we need access as well. For years, Tom was growing cannabis without telling a soul. Because it worked so well as a medicine, I wasn't prepared to go out and tell the world that this is what we were doing and, this, and it was working, in case somebody came and took it away from us. I want the medical profession to follow us and be with us in trying to convince the legislators. Their first reaction is, oh, that's a dangerous drug. It's not. It's proven lots of places that it's not a day. Nobody ever died from smoking cannabis. Lots of people die from paracetamol every year, a thing that you can buy in the supermarket. You know? yeah. Lots of people die from alcohol that you can buy here where we are. Nobody has ever died from taking cannabis. I want the, the medical profession in Ireland to recognize the benefits that is there. But you see, the, th the thing about juicing it is that um, it's not just all the, 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 the green juice that you're getting, but you're getting the seeds in there as well. It's also getting, it's been expressed out. You get this like very, very concentrated green drink. Your source of Cannabis News. Cannabis News Network.